I was listening to the story about, it was a story of a family in Washington and the little boy called the Bigfoot the Cowboy Man. And he had, apparently it had made an effort to steal this kid. And it hit me. My children were in that playpen behind me with nothing but a mosquito net over them. It could have crept up behind me and taken both of my children and I wouldn't have known. father just got like a Mustang or something from Wyoming, okay? He had it out in the corral because he couldn't put it in the barn, with the, in the stalls with the other horses. It would kick and made all the other horses nervous. Had a Seminole Indian working the horse trying to break it every day. So they had it out in the corral. This skunk ape snuck up behind this horse and grabbed it on its hind quarters. This particular horse kicks out, jumps over the corral, runs into the pasture, you know, to get away. At this point, the rancher's out there just blasted away with the dirty, dirty. Skunk ape runs into the swamp. I went up there uh, one day after that, or two days after that, I went up there and sat in the silence up there and it I'm telling you man it was free it was crazy you know it was it, there was a crazy vibe up there still I did what I could to kind of get things under control but I told her I said you need to get off this problem I, I feel like no matter how strong you are it's almost like standing in the ocean you can't stand still without moving your feet you're going to get knocked over eventually no matter how strong whatever it, you, you can't withstand a barrage of, of weird spiritual energy What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Paranormal Odyssey Live. I'm Wayne, your host, joined, as always, by my partner in crime, Miss Tiffany. What's up, ma'am? Not too much. How are you doing this evening? I'm great. Looking forward to a good show. Going to talk some Bigfoot and some Wampus Cats. Been looking forward to this. Yes, me too. I'm really interested in the Wampus Cats. Because it's like I was telling her before the show, I like, I dove hard into this <clears throat> and I've not ever heard a personal encounter with one. So I'm really yeah. intrigued. Yeah, I interviewed her a couple years ago on a podcast that I used to do and uh, had her on and I was telling her before we came on, it wasn't a video uh, interview, it was like over the phone. And my jaw was dropped while she was talking about this wampus cat thing. It It's crazy. It's a, a good time. But she is a fellow volunteer state person, lives here in Tennessee, as well as I do. She's north of me, uh, owns some property up there, and she has Bigfoot on the property as well. And that's how I found her and uh, started talking to her. It's a, a cool lady. She's hanging out backstage, and, and we will get to Miss Sonia here in just a few minutes but we got to pay some bills first well like I said and uh you know Brian and Daniel had that chat with Renee the other day and I told him in the chat room I was like bills are stupid <laughs> everyone <Bills>. agreed <laughs> bills <Yeah>. are stupid <laughs> bills are stupid why the hell do we have bills I know God. anyway <laughs> if you're new to the show let's pay them <laughs> yeah if you're new to the show have not done so already please hit that subscribe button we are happy to have you tell your family tell your friends help us to continue to grow and head in the right direction but it starts with hitting that subscribe button and if you would like to be on with wayne and i just hit us up wayne at paranormalworldproductions.com or tiffany at paranormalworldproductions.com we are looking at one open spot for may that's it so if you want to take that last spot, contact us immediately. I want to ask everybody to head over to ParanormalWorldProductions.com. Check out our website. Check out all the other shows. Sasquatch Odyssey, True Crime Odyssey, Basement Hangout, Kentucky X-Files, and, of course, that Bigfoot podcast that uh, I, myself, and Mr. Brian host together. It's uh, a good time over there. So head over to ParanormalWorldProductions.com and, and check all that out. Pick up some merch. That would be appreciated. Yeah, they just ran a 25% off special. That might still be going on. So that'd be, it's a good time to get some merch now. Yep. So as always, 
if you have questions, please put them in all capital letters and we will highlight them and save them for about the last 10 minutes of the show. Just put them in all caps so we don't miss them. And guys, I want to remind everyone about our membership that is still going on. We are still, we still have a few spots available, about 17 or 18 spots left before we hit the magic number of 50. As soon as we hit 50, we will put all of those names in a drawing and draw one person and they will win a Yeti lunch box an autographed copy of Naomi Finn's book, an autographed copy of one of Tiffany's books, The Unfamiliars, and a Paranormal Odyssey t-shirt of your choosing. You can uh, choose the color, and we'll order it and have it sent to you. But, uh, yeah, in order to have a shot at that, you got to dish out that 199 pennies that seems to be so hard for people to let go of for some reason. I don't understand. Me either, buddy. But we offer so much, you know, we just started our Discord and everybody goes in there after the show when they're members. It's like the it's like the after party to the paranormal odyssey. It's always a good time in there at night. Yeah, I mean, and it's not just after the show. I mean, I get notifications like all week. Someone's in there talking. Mm-hmm. So if you want to be a part of that community, you have to be a member. Is only people in there are that are allowed are members, and we would love to have you join us in there. All right, we got anything else? We flew yeah. through those. I don't think so. Let's bring let's bring our guest out. I'm interested to hear about this Wampus Cat after researching it. I am too. I mean, it, I've heard the story, but um, I'm anxious to to hear it again let's uh before we bring her out let's say hello to some of the people out there mr troy always in one of the first ones in my buddy alex uh has finished up my bar that he will be getting to me soon it looks amazing miss naoma finn love you ma'am thank you for helping us out as much as you do uh mr dizzle bobby dizzle we all need the dizzle from the caffeinated <laughs> cryptid oh my gosh it's gonna haunt me forever and then <laughs> we all need a little dizzle <laughs> mr <laughs> tiffany we know who that is that guy bristol prospecting usa hunting america's treasures the uh, the winner in the clubhouse with the coolest name in my opinion paranormal <laughs> biblical realm that one's pretty cool too yeah, a bunch of Mr. Our, Scott Trent. Uh, Scott Trent. Mm-hmm. What's up, buddy? A lot and some Facebook users that I can't see just yet. But uh yeah, thanks everybody for hanging out. A bunch of our regulars. Yeah, I promise you this one will not disappoint. We got Miss Sonia backstage, and you've already let me know that you are ready to go, Miss Tiffany. So let's just bring her out. Yep. Sonia, how are you, ma'am? Hi, how are you guys? Doing very, very well. First off, let me thank you for taking the time to come and hang out with us and share your encounters. Uh, Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, I was telling everybody, you are north of me in the, uh, here in the great, amazing state of Tennessee. You own some property up there. It's family property. Uh, if you don't mind, I, I want to hear how you got your, not only how you got your start in uh, in the cryptid field, but I'd like to hear, hear a little bit about the property, like how much do you have and, and what all goes on there? Yeah, I really think the cryptid life chose me. I don't, <laughs> uh, I guess living in the mountains, in the Appalachian Mountains, you know, like you don't, you don't get to, you don't get a choice, you know. Um, yeah, like I said, um or like you said, I, I have a piece of property and I have a family of Bigfoots that live like that. I live near, I can't say that, you know, they live near me. <laughs> I live near the, where they live. And, um, yeah, I guess, I guess what first got us into it, like when I was about like seven or eight, me and my sister, we saw a Sasquatch by the Creek and it was watching us play. We, and we had seen it a couple of times, but like we, I, I went, we had went and told my mom and my dad about it. And my dad was just like, you know, he never would say nothing. 
you know, he didn't want us to be scared of the woods, but he always knew something was out there. He always knew. And my mom, she always knew, but she's kind of like the opposite. She just pretends that it's not there. So she told us when we were little that it was just our imagination and that we would go back outside and play, you know? So for like a long time, it was just like, I thought that people saw stuff like that. And that's what imagination was like in my mind, you know, like <laughs> you don't really know, you don't really understand what you're seeing, you know, because your parents are like, oh no, that's, you know, my mom's like, oh, that's your imagination. So I just, me and my sister sharing delusions out in the woods <laughs> when we were little, <laughs> but so that was when I was like eight. But when I was 12, my sister, she does animal impressions. She, um, she makes a lot of weird animal noises. Uh, she's even, she's been on Jay Leno and America's Got Talent for her animal noises. Oh, wow. Um, but she would make this, like this, this holler, this screaming noise. And she would do it all the time. Anytime we was outside, she would just, you know, anytime we was out in the woods, she would just holler and scream like that. And one summer, like when I was 12, um, one showed up at the house and it sat outside of our house every night and screamed and would just sit outside and scream every night. Like, and it was scary. It was, it was the sound. And I've watched a lot of Bigfoot shows and there's only been a few times if I ever heard the, the same kind of like how that, that, that I heard when I was, when, you know, when it was first started, um, it, it was somewhere between like a dying jackrabbit and a howler monkey. Like if you mixed, if you know what those two sounds sound like, that's the only way I can describe it. Um, and it sat outside all summer long. It would, it would sound like it was like standing right outside the window. The dogs wouldn't chase it. I had, I've had a, a lot of like outside dogs and a lot of, I've had some really, I wouldn't say aggressive dogs, but really territorial dogs. Um, that would fight anything. They fought, they got into a fight with the black Panther one time and I got a tooth from it. But like, um, of course, TWRA says there's no black Panthers out here, even though, you know, we've, uh, we've all seen them and they're really hard to take a picture of. I'll tell you what, <laughs> especially at night. Um, but my dogs wouldn't even chase it. It wouldn't, my dogs wouldn't even go after it. You'd go outside and my dogs would be laying on the porch, just whining. And, you know, and as, as just as, you know, as a 12 year old girl, you know, even my dad, he knew like in his mind, he knew what it was. Um, but you know, we didn't, we always had an idea, you know, that dad, dad told us, you know, like, that's probably what it is, but we, we never got to see it, but I, I had seen it before. So I had a feeling that that's what it was, that, that it was back. And it was just like, maybe it was trying to communicate with my sister or maybe it thought my sister was like one of them and we had her captured or just something, you know, there's something to make sense of it. Cause you really, when stuff like this starts to happen in your house, you really want to make sense of things just because you want to be able to go outside again. You want to be able to uh, go outside at night. Uh, we have, we have livestock, we have chickens, we have goats, I have dogs, I have things, you know, that thing that I have to go outside at night to protect even the property just in general. Um, but I, in a way I feel like the property out there really protects itself and the things on it, you know, but, um, but yeah, so that started when I was 12 and ever since then I was, I was completely fascinated, just completely just obsessed with, you know, what these things were in the woods. So I started spending a lot of time out in the woods and I mean a lot of time and you start to see things, you start to hear things. Um, and at one point they'll really like, once you're not scared anymore, once the fear is gone, I mean, even, even though I saw like, I know the Bigfoots are there, the Sasquatch are there. Like, even when I saw the Wampus cat, like I was very surprised when I seen her, but I wasn't scared. You know, I was surprised. I was, I was more upset, you know, that my friend was there and didn't say anything than I was anything. So I was just surprised. But once you let that fear go, um, and when you're in the woods, once you let that fear go, really things will start to appear to you and things will start to show themselves to you that you just, I, you know, there's some things that I can't explain, some things that I've seen that I just, you know, I've seen orbs. I've seen, I've seen, a, I've seen dog man in the County next to me, which is the County in between where I'm at now, <laughs> which is the next County over. But I've seen, I've just, I've seen things up here. And, and I think once you start to see, 
one thing and you know it's there, then you start to see a bunch of other things. Like things will start to like reveal themselves to you. Or maybe it's just that you're paying attention and that you're, that you just, you know, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, you know, I, I've heard that before, Sonia, that it seems like as soon as you've opened yourself up and you've seen that one thing, it everything else tends to open up to you because as many people as I've talked to, it, it's rare that I talk to people that's only seen a Bigfoot. It seems like most of them have seen, if it's not a, just a Bigfoot, it's Bigfoot and UFOs. Yeah, the lights in the sky. But the thing about, I tell people about that because a lot of people want to think that they're connected, but... I see them separately all the time, but when you're out far enough where the Bigfoot are, you're out far enough to be able to see the lights in the sky. It's just, it's, they're there all the time. You wouldn't believe how many, I can go out any given night and see the lights in the sky. I can show them to my friends. I know when they're there. Like, I know it sounds crazy, but like, um, <laughs> like I'll, I'll, I, I, like I can, I can just be sitting here at night and be like, okay, everybody come with me and I can go outside and there'll be one there. And people are like, how do you do that? I'm like, I don't know. It's just this, it's just like, it's like I can hear them and it's, 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 it's different. It's like, um, I'm a psychic, but it's different than like hearing people inside their head. It's different than the things you hear in the forest. It's, it's just a different, I don't know how to explain it, but yeah. Yeah, and that, so, that tends to be the the norm that people that that can do this stuff can't really explain how they can do it. Now, uh, as far as your property, how many acres do you own? I own fifty eight, but my neighbors, which they are a um, kind of like a conservation kind of place. I wouldn't say commune. <laughs> I, I mean, I could <laughs> say commune, but we won't call it that. And they have like five hundred acres beside oh, me shit. and then on the other side we have a lake and you would have to think that tva owns most of that you know or a lot of that went you know if you're not completely mm. rich but tva owns a lot of the land that's out there so there's a lot of land in between me and the mountains me the lake and then my neighbors and they're pretty cool and they know that my neighbors know that they're out there i think every um it's really funny because i was on one of the um, just one of the Bigfoot sites and I put my story out there and I got somebody hit me up and they were like, Hey, yeah, my, my mother lives out in, like in East Tennessee and she, like, he starts describing this stuff and come to find out she's my neighbor. She lives like two houses down. Wow. <laughs> and, yeah. And he was like, wait, I was like, yeah, wait, no, your mom lives beside me. He was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, people. My uh, world. Yeah, it was really cool. It was really, it was just really cool that we found each other like that. We're neighbors and we don't even know each other, which in all, in all honesty makes me feel bad because I know some of my neighbors, but people move in. I don't just, we don't rush over with cookies, but yeah. maybe we should. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> but I mean, I'm not, I, I'm like the weird neighbor. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> When it's you're talking funny. hundreds of acres separating you, it's not like you live in a neighborhood now. Give yourself a break. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, they did, they live like there's the road and they all live in the front. And me and my other neighbors live in the back where all the land is. So I live in like the lowest part of the valley there, which is really cool. It's, um, I find a lot of, I really think there's a portal on my property, but I find a lot of really cool stuff in the woods. I find a lot of, um, stuff together in the woods that doesn't make sense like i found last summer i found a bird tipped arrow um arrowhead uh an old marble the bottom of a 1974 uh pepsi bottle because you can trade trademark their numbers right back to the year it was made and a world war ii german bayonet sheaf all together in a pile in the woods not wow. sure wow yeah, and I find I find things like that, you know, just randomly. I found a, a key to a clock. I'm sure it. There's an old house back there, and there was a couple old homesteads, and I'm sure that's probably where the the key came back. But, but I get that feeling like in the woods when I'm out there, like you should go over here and look at stuff, and I'll go and I'll find stuff like that. It's really cool. It's um, I found some more rails yesterday. Uh yeah, when I was yeah. out in the woods, Your I get place. that. <laughs> Sounds amazing, Sonia. It it really, really does. And I know that, that your privacy is something that, that you hold dear, but 
if you ever want somebody to come out and investigate the, the property, I would love to bring some of my people out there and have a look. But I understand it if you're hesitant about that. Most people are. Don't want a lot of people on their property. But well, the less people, do, the better. If it's new people, especially the less people you take, the more chance you are to see more things. Like when it's just me and somebody else, like hands down, there'll always be something in the woods that'll happen. Like if it's well, just if you me ever and someone want to else, just me up there. <laughs> because yeah. I'm still, I'm still waiting on that visual. You know, uh, I've had experiences. I've been doing this since 2019. I founded my organization. Manimal research in 2019 i've had one sighting it was at night uh up in the mountains in north georgia on pigeon mountain in walker county it was through thermal and i watched this thing swaying back and forth and a small one running in front of it for probably 20 minutes but my battery on my therm kept dying and i kept having to run to my truck to charge it because it and knew he, he knew he was watching it, yeah. Like they get, they get, like I love that, like that rock. It's either that they're nervous or that they're excited, and most of the time it's that they're excited because they're just like, "What are you doing?" You know. So you you witnessed that on your property as well. Oh yeah, like if I, like I feed, I like I know a lot of people say you shouldn't feed your sasquatches or whatever, but mine know that I am slack. <laughs> They know I'm flaky like a croissant. I'm not out there. We don't have a schedule for snacks. <laughs> we get what we get when we get it. But I, I take them eggs, a lot of like farm fresh eggs a lot of the time. And a lot of the time we have like a day watcher and she will get up. She'll watch me go to the chicken coop. And a lot of the time I can go back in the house and look out the window and she'll be in the woods doing the like, I know you're coming with eggs. Like I know you're coming in. I know they can. I know they can feel you and I know they know your intent. They can, I, I, I am one of those people that, that believes that they, they can read your mind. You know, they know what's in your heart. Um, but when you're that connected with the energy in the woods for so long, I mean, if we had stayed in the woods, we could use that same energy and we could, we could do a lot I of, agree. yeah, we could use a lot of our brains that we don't use now because we have been dumbed down so much completely just, in, you know, I it's agree a whole with that. Story. Um, yeah, I think that's a great way of putting mm -hmm. it. I, I think that that we have being dumbed down is a good way of putting it. I, I mean, feel. we they're put they, they 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 put fluoride in your water and they <laughs> it causes you to be docile and after long periods of time, it literally causes um your brain to deteriorate. Deteriorate. I can't even speak. See, I must be drinking city water. <laughs> I got a well at my house. It's fine. I'm cut off by a creek, so they can't put in city water at my house. I'm grandfathered in. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so lucky okay. me. Um, well, we, we know that you definitely have Bigfoot on the property, and I want to give that some time. But I feel like, you know, the title of this episode is Wampus Cat, and that's what a lot of people are wanting to hear. So if you don't mind sharing your wampus cat at counter and then we'll we'll go back to some bigfoot stuff right so so having the bigfoots on the property will blind you a about a lot of stuff because like i i i started hearing noises and i usually i like i like i said i usually know the bigfoots pretty well i usually know what time of the year they're in and out because sometimes they'll go up in the mountains when it gets starts getting cold weather and they'll just come in and out you know through the cold months just a few times you know or when it's warmer um but i started hearing noises and it was just like i don't know how to it's like children at the park like you hear a bunch of kids playing at the park and they're all giggling and laughing it would sound like that it would sound like a bunch of girls giggling and chatting together and it would sound like people talking and you would hear it and you'd just be like, sounds like somebody's talking out in the woods. That's so weird. And I, I, I know them. that Bigfoots make vocals. I know that they chatter and stuff, but this is, this is like almost like people mocking, you know, or like somebody mocking and, or like somebody with the radio on because it wouldn't just be like ch chattering. It would be like tunes. Um, I would hear whistling. I'd hear like, like when I say whistling, it was like not just somebody that could whistle. You would eventually run out of air, right? Because, you know, you can only whistle for so long. Most people, unless you're some sort of champion whistle, <laughs> whistleblower out in the woods, you would hear tunes and it, it would just, it would just, it would be really pretty. And you would just be like, and then that would go into like, almost like different bird calls 
but not like real birds. I don't know how to describe it. Like, uh, like stuff you never hear before, like just, just weird calls. And I, I know Bigfoot's like, I know they make birds, they make bird calls. Like they, they'll make like messed up bird calls or just like they'll make several different bird calls in a row. But this was something different. It was just like, and then it would make other noises and then you would hear the chattering and the whistling again. And, and this went on for like two or three weeks. I had friends that know the Bigfoots are up there. And I told them, I was like, listen, there's something at my house. And I was like, it's not, it's not the normal thing that I'm hearing because this thing would like, I know I said like that when we first started here in Sasquatch, out, it would sound like they were right outside the window, but this thing would come up to my window and drag its like fingers across the window. And I would hear these noises and I had, I had that happen like twice in a week's period and it creeped me out. Like I'm not really, I'm not usually scared of stuff, but that creeped me out. Cause it, I was like, what was that? You know, and I don't, the Bigfoots don't, you, they don't usually mess with me like that. You know, they, they still throw stuff if I bring people in the woods, but they don't ever, they don't, they used to come up to the window and like, you would hear them walking by the window or breathing, but never would they touch, you know, they never touched the windows or hit the house. So this thing was coming up and, I would hear it and I'd go outside and I'd still hear it. So me and my friend, I, I made one of my friends come stay with me and we had been gone all day and I have, I have, I had like four pigs at the time and we've been gone all day and I needed to feed the pigs. And I was like, will you walk out here with me to feed the pigs? You know, cause I, like I, 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 like, I've been hearing strange noises. There's something out there, you know, and I know there's something out there. And she was like, well, I just showed her Bigfoot like the month before she had seen her first Bigfoot. She had seen him and she was just like, okay. So she's, she was like, it's probably just Bigfoot. And I was like, no, this is something different. I, I just, I just know it's something different. I just, I, I can't describe, them. I just know. So we go out and we start hearing the chattering, like immediately, as soon as we go into the field and we hear the whistling, um, we get out to the pig pen and we start hearing the chattering sound. It's like the, like the, like the kids chattering back and forth. It's what it sounds like. And this goes on and on. And I'm still just every now and then. And she's like got the flashlight behind me and she's like looking up in the woods and I'm stirring the pig bucket and emptying it a little bit. And then you had to stir it because it was so thick. I had to restir it and re like, so I'm doing that. She's got the flashlight up behind me and she's like, I told her if, if you wanted to hide on the property from anything, uh, first thing that you should do is turn your flashlight out because everything knows where you are when you have a flashlight. But she's got my flashlight. She's zooming the woods. My dogs were out even. I had all my dogs outside with me. They were running the woods. They seem unbothered. Um, and just all of a sudden, I hear that chattering sound and it sounds like it's really close. And she turns her flashlight, my friend turns her flashlight off and gets behind me. And just stands behind me with her flashlight off. And I'm like, that's weird. And she starts going, can we go? Are you, are you done? I'm ready to go in. I really need to sit down. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm almost done. Hang on. And I was like, do you hear that noise? And she's like, yeah, I hear it. And I was like, that's weird. And she, I was like, she's like, can we go inside? I was like, yeah, are you okay? And she was like, yeah, I just need to sit down. And I was like, let me see that flashlight. I was like, let me see your flashlight. You're not using it. Let me see that. I was like, do you hear that? And she chucks the flashlight at me. She's still standing behind me. And I just turn and turn the flashlight on. And behind my pig pen is kind of on an incline. Um, just so it drains properly. So it's kind of on a heel. Some of it is. And behind the pig pen, sitting on her butt with her legs straight out. She's sitting like this. Just sitting there. Was the wampus cat. Was this thing. Which which at the, at the time I didn't know what to call it. Because it was a very. It was a cat like creature for sure. She was um. She almost looks like a mancoon cat or one of the Egyptian cats in the face. She had big green eyes. She had like long brown hair. She looked like she was wearing a leotard, but like, cause her skin like that was on her body was so fine and thin that it was, it was like she was wearing a leotard. She had two breasts. She had a very human like body. It went down into just like human like legs and it went down into human like ankles all the way to the, to her foot which her foot was like, it was a paw at the end, but it was like an ankle at the other end, which I had been finding footprints. I've got a, I've got a picture of one of the footprints that I always thought was a juvenile Sasquatch, but it, 
and I'd found, I'd found other ones with it like throughout the week, but they were smaller and it looked like a double, double printed bear, a bear thing with an ankle. And mm. I was like, it doesn't look like a Sasquatch thing. So I do have a picture of one of her feet, but, but she just sat there and my dogs were running around her and she was just sitting there. And I was like, what the F is that? And, and I was like, Courtney, do you see that? What is that? And she was like, nothing. She didn't say a word. And I was like, dude, and I turned around and was like, dude, do you see that? And she was like, yeah, I see it. It's been sitting there for about 10 minutes. And I was like, what? <laughs> so like when she had turned the flashlight out, got behind me and just stopped. And she was just like, oh, you know, she was just, she wasn't sure she was seeing it. And I know that now, like people are traumatized by certain things that they see. And I'm not, I'm just like, what is that? Cause I, she's like, can we go in? I was like, you can, you want out the you want the Southern flashlight, this crappy flashlight that I had this whole time trying to start the pig bucket over here? <laughs> because I was like, you can go inside because like, I wasn't scared. She sat there for another few minutes. My dogs ran around it. My one dog sat down beside her and she, she, I always say this wrong, petted my dog. Yeah. So she started petting my dog and I was like, she's petting our dog. And I was like, she's petting, she's petting Wonka. This is my dog's name. And she was just my Courtney's like, yeah yeah, I really want to go in right now. And she's like, I really want to go in, Sonia. And I was like, you can go in. <laughs> I'm not moving. But she sat there for another, like, I don't know. She sat there for like five minutes. And then she got up on two legs. She only had two arms and two legs. She had, um, and she had a long, like fluffy brown tail too. It was like the same color as her hair. And she got up on two legs and walked off into the woods and she was gone. But, oh my God. um, for it took me two days it, well it we, we we went in and called my mom immediately my mom was like i don't want to hear this please because <laughs> she's scared of the dark she's not scared it's like the dark dark she's just scared of what's in the dark so she's just like you know but tell me what you saw she's like she made us because I, I wanted to make sure that we saw the same thing and i didn't want my what i thought i saw to influence my friend so I made my, her talk to my mom separately. And then I told my mom separately what I seen. My mom's like, yeah, y'all saw the same stuff. And I was like, I thought so. I said, Courtney won't talk about it. It took my friend, it took Courtney a couple of days to talk about it, but it took me two days to process it too. It took me two days to just type in cat-like creatures in Tennessee. That's what I did. I, I typed in cat-like creature in Tennessee and the wampus cat came up and it took a little bit of digging, but when I got to the, I got to the Cherokee legend of it. And when I got to, hold on. <coughs> when I got to the Cherokee legend of it, they had, um, they have like a book of real life encounters through the years of what people had seen. And I read those and they to a T had seen exactly what I'd seen. They described her, the, they described the whistling, they described the, the chattering sounds that she made. Like it sounded like a couple, you know, girls all giggling you know, they, they, they described all that and, um, they described her, dude, what she looked like. But so I, so I had got a grasp and an idea like that. Okay. So I know Sasquatch is out there when I was in my, when I was about 18 or 19, I saw the dog man, which I thought was a werewolf for years until I learned what dog man was, um, you know, in the County beside mine. So I'd already seen Sasquatch and I knew there was werewolves out there, <laughs> but this was like, <laughs> This was, this was different, you know, like I wasn't ever scared of her. I was just very curious, very curious. She was beautiful. Um, like I said, I stood up there until she walked off, you know, she didn't seem phased. Um, I, I, I looked it up on, you know, online what it was. And then my sister's boyfriend came up like the next day comes up at night and he was, he came up to the porch and he was, he knocked on the door and he was like, Hey, could you go out in the woods with me? I think there's coon hunters out in the woods. And I said, what makes you think that? And he was like, I can hear people talking. And I was like, oh, I said, were they whistling? And he was like, yeah, how did you know? Was it you? And I was like, no, no, <laughs> listen, you're going to think I'm crazy. I'm going to come out in the woods with you, but you're going to think I'm crazy. And I'm about to tell you what I saw. And I told him, and I don't think he believed me, but we went out in the woods anyway. So by the time that we, by the time we got out, we, we walked around the woods for almost four hours. What, it, and she followed us. She followed us through the woods. I can only get, we had a dog that just showed up like two weeks before that. He was deaf. Like, I don't know where the dog came from. I just know he was deaf. Um, 
uh, him and my biggest dog that, you know, always guards the property. She, she knows the Bigfoots are out there. She makes a first, she, she even makes like a certain like sniffing sound when, when something's in the woods and she knows it's like the Sasquatch when she knows it's them, she'll go into the woods and won't bark, but she'll make this weird sniff sound. But she came with us. There's only two dogs that I could, you know, that came with us. And for four hours, this thing followed us. She followed us through the woods and would run around us. And me and Tom only would like, we could only catch like, like I'd already seen her, you know, but I, we could only catch the end of her tail. She would go around us so fast. And I know Sasquatch is like, they can go in and out of stuff. Like they can cloak and go around you. But this thing moves so fast around us that, like I said, we stood back to back at one time with our flashlights off and you could feel the wind as she ran around us and we could turn our flashlights on and not be able to catch her even back to back like that. Just the, you would just get like a glimpse of her tail and then it would seem like she was over here and then you would hear her giggling over here and it was crazy. And, um, by the end of the four hours, like my brother-in-law there, he knew that like, he knew there was something, he knew there was something out there. He didn't quite get like a full picture of what it was, but he knew something was out there and, <laughs> and yeah, and, he still like he still talks about it because he knew it wasn't the Sasquatches because he's had interaction with the Sasquatches out there too. But like he knew whatever this was, it was something different. Just by the way it ran around us, we could never lay eyes on it. But she just the way she moved, um, she stuck she stuck around for a month or two, and um, she was gone, and I didn't hear her. And every now and then I'll hear her. every now and then I've heard her like three times since then. This was like three four years ago, and I've heard her three times since, and. The last time that she, well, when she left, the one dog that, that was sitting beside her that she was, that she was touching, he actually disappeared. He actually, I went to, I had to, I put a thing on Facebook because my dog went missing. Um, he was gone for seven days and he was, there's a big giant mountain right in the front of me, like where I live. He was on the other, very other side of it. And my neighbors had found him, which I call them my neighbors, you know, they lived down the road with me. I went to school with their kids, you know. So I've been to their house, you know, <laughs> so she called me and she's like, I found your dog. He's at my house. He came, we found him up in the woods, you know, behind our house. And I was like, he must've went over the mountain. He followed her. Like, I'm convinced that he followed her through the woods and was gone, you know, with her because he was like depressed for weeks after she was gone. He just laid in, he, he didn't even want to go outside. And the one of the last times that I had heard her, he didn't come back. He always comes back. He's the first one to the door when you let him outside. You know what I mean? Usually. But the, the last time I'd heard her, he was like the last one out, like the last one in. He didn't come back for a couple hours. And I knew that she was back and I knew that's what I'd heard. But I haven't was seen he, her since then. Was he the one that she was petting? Yeah. Yeah. So and, there was almost this there was almost a connection between the two of them. Yeah, because he had been like in the, in the in the couple of weeks that that prior to you know when I was hearing the noises, he was disappearing. Then um, I found him down the road towards the lake at one point and went and picked him up. I just happened to find him. I just I just happened to drive through there and I knew if I like had somebody drive me and I called his name, like he would hear me. You know what I mean? And that's what happened. And I found him on one of the lake roads, um, and that had happened like two or three weeks prior to seeing her. And then he would, he would go missing at night. And like I said, he's the first one, like now he's the first one back to the door. So, so like, you know, it's not, it's, it was really unusual, but like I said, it, it like where he was on the other side, um, like, it, like walking down the road, it would be, it would be really, it would, it would. He went, he had to have went over the mountain, you know, so he, I, I was pretty convinced that he had followed her. That's so why crazy. is it, why is it, uh, why did you think she came all of a sudden? Well, my dad had died and, um, a lot of just, uh, I wasn't spending time in the woods like I used to. I didn't enjoy life like I used to. Me and my sister were fighting. Me and my mom were fighting. Everything on our farm was in shambles. And at the time, I didn't know. Like, I didn't know. Like, I, I did a lot of research, like, uh, after the fact. Apparently, in 
the Cherokee thing says that she comes to people that need to see her, especially if you're female mm-hmm. and especially if you're on a farm or if you're, um, if you're a part of the land, I guess, I don't know exactly how to describe it. Like if you're a part of the, if you're part of nature and you have that disconnect and you need something to bring you back, like, and, and it really did, it really did it, it, it really did bring me back. Of course, I'm used to being called crazy and I'm used to being called like all kinds of things, but because <laughs> of the Sasquatch and stuff, like I can say Sasquatch and a lot, you know, I'm used to hearing eye rolls. So mm-hmm. it, it wasn't nothing to me um, to be called crazy or whatever, but the, like I, I was going through a lot of stuff with my dad dying and I felt crazy. Um, and it was just, I just, I needed it, I guess. I guess she just, you know. Yeah. I she, just, she was just there to bring you peace. Yeah, and it's just to bring me back. And your to curiosity the back. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. And, like, yeah, and, and bring me back to the woods because I needed to be connected with with the woods because if anything that'll heal you faster than to for grief, and, and you, you never heal from certain grief. Like, I don't think there's, you know, time makes some things worse. But the only way to really balance yourself out and get that feeling that you're still connected with the people have passed on is go through nature. It's the easiest way for me. It's not for everybody, but I would yeah, make, I would, agree I would with say that. it is. But <laughs> but teach his own. I wouldn't force people into you know because I do. I lo- I do. I go out a lot at night, um, just out in the woods by myself. I make sure the dogs are in because if you let my dogs out, they, no matter where I'm at, they will find me. Um, <laughs> and I will find a spot in the woods and I will sit down and I, I'll find a tree and I'll sit down with my back to the tree and I'll just sit there. And that's how I started seeing things in the woods. That's how I, I that's how it really started when I was younger. I was um, just going out there at night and that's how I found out like a, like a Sasquatch with their eye shine. Like the Sasquatch on the property, they, they all have like different colored eye shine. They use it, you know, uh, they use it to distract you sometimes. They use it for all different reasons, you know, and you always, and you know, it's, you know, which one it is by the color of their eye shine a lot of the time. Um, really? Yeah. So like the, I've seen like uh, orange, blue, almost purple is like blue, purple, <laughs> uh, yellow and white. So you've never seen red? The, well, I would say the orange is like a red color, but I would say orange because everybody thinks of red as like it being a bad color, like burnt orange. That's a color. <laughs> I'm from Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> orange around here. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. Very true. <laughs> so we bleed orange. All it's right. fine. So, uh, you know, we, we worked our way back to Bigfoot, so I, I would like to hear, you know, we've got probably another 15 minutes or so that we can talk. Um, any encounters? Like, uh, what was, what's the first, or no, not the first, what is probably the most, and it doesn't sound like it's happened very often with you, but the most scared or intimidated you've ever been with, with the Sasquatch? Uh, so... Again, we have a lot of like hunters that like to creep onto the property because there's so much land in between us and the lake. And, you know, and there's some people that just don't know us <laughs> and uh, they get onto the property at night. And a couple of years ago, me and my me and my brother-in-law went back into the woods and we, of course, we've learned to like walk the property without flashlights. And we do that. We do that often. Because if you're trying to catch a hunter, he's going to know you're coming if you got a flashlight. Again, if anything's out there. And I was at the, I was on the, I was on the top of my hill and I was trying to like, I was trying to be sneaky, like, because I could hear the, the, the hunters coming and I was going to make sure that, like, because there's our property lines right there. So I was coming down through this, like, um, this, it's like a row of cedar trees and it's like a thicket of cedar trees. And I came down through there and I ran right into a Sasquatch, which at first, cause I was blind in the dark. I, he like, I knew I'd run into something hairy and I went face first, basically into him. Like, well, not face first, like hands first and face first, because I, I was going from tree to tree just to stay behind the tree. So nobody would see me if they topped the hill. 
And the next thing that I thought was a tree was not a tree. And I grabbed him and I grabbed one and I went, oh my God, it's a bear is my, my first thought. And it grunted. And when he grunted, I said, oh, like, I know what it is. It's fine. And I just stood there oh. like that, like, hmm. you know, and that was that. And my dog come up, the, the same dog that the one that's always outside. She's, um, she's a great Pyrenees. So she, <laughs> she she's part, she's part blue blue healer and great Pyrenees. So she's a big dog. So she comes up behind me and she immediately started sniffing the way she does the the sniff that she knows what it was. And she sat down beside me and just did the sniff thing and he walked off and I just stood there like, and the hunters come up over the, the hill there and I was standing there like frozen, not even behind a tree, just out in the middle of the field. <laughs> so, cause I, I got so startled. Like I didn't want to move cause I was just like, ah, oh. But that's the only time that I've, and I wouldn't say I was really intimidated. I just, I don't know. You know, I, I spend a lot of times, a lot of time in the woods, but you still don't, there's, you just don't know. You just, you just never know. You just don't want to do anything that's going to, you know, like hurt your bond or hurt your, you know, like, or hurt that connection that you have with them. You know, you don't want to seem rude. I don't know. You yeah. know, there was always that, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that's uh i think the second time i've heard of someone actually running into one I, i've heard janice carter talk i'm not sure if you're familiar with janice carter but she's in our area too that grew up the 50 years with bigfoot lady yeah she actually ran into the back of of fox's leg if i remember right yeah but fox you, used to come up and you know communicate with them and i believe that 100 <laughs> percent yeah I do. You mentioned the dog right after that happened and the dog sniffing and everything. And that first thing that made me think about was the smell that people report. Have you ever experienced that? So I've, the only time I've ever really smelled anything like that, there is a rogue male that comes through between December and March and he's usually by himself. And he's the only one that I've ever really had an encounter where it smelled because he smells like a poe cat and burnt coffee. And you know, when he's in the holler, because the whole holler smells like him for like a week. Cause he always stays like for, you know, just a week. Um, he's the only one I've ever had a problem with, uh, that has, I would, I wouldn't say be, was aggressive, but he stole chickens from my chicken coop. And I had a, like an encounter with him. He's also the same one that my friend Courtney was before she saw the wampus cat. She saw him because again, it was, he was in my chicken coop. It was still in chickens from me and we caught him. And when we walked out the back door, she walked out first and my floodlight came on and he stood there, just dropped the chicken coop and stood like he, he took two steps back into the, the cedar <laughs> oh, thicket. Yeah. And he looked like he, he literally looked like he just like turned into it. He, and I realized that's when I realized a lot of the camo and the way they, they cloak and the way they can do that. Like your death perception and the way your eyes work with shadows and stuff when it's in the woods like that. Um, Cause you, you see everything inverted. So your eyes have to invert everything back and then you have to, your brain fills in the rest what's around it. And they can use a lot of that against you immediately. So they can step back in the shadows and be able to cloak themselves immediately without like, you know, actual cloaking themselves. They can just hide in the shadows and become what looks like part of the tree and use your own eyesight against you. And like I said, he, he's, you know, he's the only one that I've had any kind of, um, that I've noticed a smell from. And now yeah. the way you describe him, Sonia makes me, think about and we were just talking about miss janice carter who i've had on the show a couple of times i've been out in the woods with janice um she talks about blackie and her disdain for him and he's dangerous yes and how you talked about him made me think of him <laughs> is there a possibility that could be him well he's a dark green color like he's he's i wouldn't say he's black but he's like a dark green he looks like the color of dark moss in the, in the woods around here um and again, he stinks. I had that trouble with him getting into my chicken coop like three times. He took, he took a couple of chickens that, that one time I caught him. I caught him the second time. And the third time I went out and left food for him and told him to stay away from my stuff. And besides him eating all of my, 
I, it was my first, I did a winter crop that year. I was so excited because I grew Brussels sprouts and Brussels sprouts are so good. And they're a winter crop and I had, they were beautiful. He ate every one of my Brussels sprouts. I have a picture of his foot in my garden, but he, he ate every one of my Brussels sprouts and my broccoli. And, uh, yeah. So, so besides that, you know, I didn't have an, I, did, I haven't, I haven't had any more trouble out of him since then. And in the winter now, even when I know, like, if I feel like he's through, or if I smell him, I try to leave eggs. Like I try to leave him something I do just because everybody else would say that the smell, the smell is almost like a territorial thing, at least in that case. Like, uh, I'm not sure because I know it's not his territory, but, um, or he's trying to make it himself. He's trying to make saying, it hey. his territory. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not even sure about that. Like he just, I know he comes to the same time every year and I'm not sure any of get like if they fight or anything like that, but like, I, I just know he comes through, he doesn't stay and he's gone. So I feel like he's mm -hmm. making the rounds, you know what I mean? And, and I think that yeah, he I just, wants every, and he's letting, he doesn't want to have to deal with anything. So I think he just constantly smells like that. So animals don't mess with him. Humans won't mess with him because it, it'll burn like the, the smell will almost burn your eyes. Cause again, it's like a, it's not like just a regular skunk, but it's like a poke cat, like a, like a fresh, fresh poke cat and like burnt coffee. And again, it about make your, it'll linger for, for a while. <laughs> but like, yeah, I, yeah. I really do. I think that, I think it's just, he's letting everything know that he's there and it's his round and, and, and they know, um, my dogs won't even go like the one dog I talk about. She don't even go in the woods. Like after him, they don't even bark. They just, we just know he's there, you know, that smell is something that I've never experienced. I've talked about it many times. I want to, as, as crazy as that sounds. And people talk about how horrendous the smell is. I want to smell it. I want to know what this smell is, but I still haven't. And another thing that I just recently experienced that other people talk about is the throwing. Like Bigfoot will throw shit at you. Have you <laughs> experienced that? Oh yeah. They, um, no, they have different things. Like if, if you have people with bad intentions or just people that they don't like, cause they, like I said, I know they know what's, what kind of person you are, you know, even, and I'm not calling them like comparing them to dogs, but even dogs know what kind of people energy runs. Things can read energy. So if they, if they know that you don't have good energy, I've had them, I've had people stand right beside me and get hit right in the face with walnuts, uh, rocks, small rocks, um, hickory nuts, things like that. Um, yeah. I got hit one time by a hickory nut right in the face. Um, I didn't feel like it was an aggressive thing. I think it was a, a playful thing because it was the, ju we had a, a couple juveniles uh, a couple of summers ago and they told, they, they eat my corn. They got, they, like they were throwing rocks at the house or throwing like pebbles at the house all night. And you could hear them hit the, the tin roof and just hit the tin roof and roll down. And that went on all night. Um, and just stuff like that. So I really feel like it was them just being, just being silly. And, um, but I've had friends um, who've been out in the woods. Like um, one of my ex-boyfriends was working in the woods and he had a rock about this big get thrown at him. Oh, shit. And that was probably the most aggressive, I think, thing that they have done um, towards somebody. You just muted, muted yourself. your... Hey, Sonia, you, you just muted. muted yourself. You're muted. My bad. <laughs> you no, you're good. I, yeah, I said, well, my ex got like that rock thrown him. So that was the most aggressive thing that I think that's ever happened. But in hindsight, that it was probably for the best. They probably knew something I didn't. <laughs> Obviously, he's not around they anymore. Could, well, that's, yeah, they that's could tell. They gonna, were saying you're excuse. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Do you think that, that the, well, this dude's an asshole and he needs to go? So they do. They um, the big one at him. Yeah. And like that, most people that's had like, things particularly just the things thrown at them have been just you know come to find out they're not you know just shit people <laughs> yeah. and it doesn't happen often and i pretty i'm a pretty good judge of character but like you know it's a good way to weed out people yeah. and i've had people that you know like 
that really want to see them, you know, and like have come up to the house and have seen them. And they're like, oh my God, that's, there's something there. And I'm like, well, yeah, you wanted to see them. They're allow allowing you to see them. I Especially the friends them. I have now. I'm, no, I no, travel with a I'm pretty good group of hippies. Waiting on my opportunity to see them. But uh, we are running out of time here tonight. And I would yeah. like to get to the questions. We've got a few for you. So we're going to do like a rapid fire kind of question and answer kind of thing. The first one is uh, from Troy. My good buddy Troy says, portal, question mark, go back. Is the portal fixed in position or is it moving? I think that it moves. I think that like certain things, I think there's certain points that, that it's really powerful, but I think in general, if it's near the area, it, it's also portal. Like if that makes sense, like there's like a main portal and the rest of it's just kind of like in the area. So it kind of gets like, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next one is from my buddy, Alex. This is about, the wampus cat did it walk away on two feet or four it had two legs so she had two arms and two legs and she walked away on two legs wow yeah she stood up she was like i said she was sitting on her butt with her feet straight out in front of her with her legs crossed and i didn't really see her hands but again she she had a very petite human-like torso and she even had two breasts. She didn't have like a row of nipples or anything, but she had like two breasts. And again, but she looked like a woman, like a figure of a woman. Very, very. And that's why I call her a she, because she was very dainty and very, very feminine to me. Like, you know. Now, one question. Well, and I was, I, go ahead, Tiffany. I was just going to say, I was questioning because, you know, in the articles that you read, and God only knows what you can find on the internet, but people were saying that she had six legs and that she was like using them for all kinds of things. And I'm like, it didn't make sense to me because if she's going to have six legs to help her, why, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and a lot of those like times that they say that she, like, if you, if you saw the way she moved and I'm not saying like, I seen exactly the way she moved because this was at night, but if stuff moves so fast, you would get tracers from that. It would look like she had six legs if she was moving like that. Yeah. And that's my theory yeah. with that because I like there's been some people like they've had some encounters that they described very similar to what I saw. But then they had the six leg theory and I was like, well, what I saw didn't have six legs. But again, if she was moving like that, it would appear when things move like that, it would appear like the tracers would appear that she had six legs or like extra legs. Even it could. You know, yeah. again, that, that's, that's just very true. That's a good explanation. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to cut in line. This is one of my questions that I have for you regarding the Wampus Cat. Uh, and a couple of people have mentioned throughout tonight that they would love to see like an illustration of what you saw. Have you seen any illustrations or pictures or anything that come close to what you saw? Well, now that AI is doing pictures and stuff i've seen some things that are very similar and you know it's crazy i have a lot of artist friends i would think that i could get somebody to draw it but i can only draw conclusions i'm not i'm not an artist i can like i'm not very good at like drawing and i really wish i could but um again i've seen some things that were like similar and i think they were mostly ai okay all right. Well, that was my question, and you answered it. So let's get to Alex's question. Did she have a tail? Yes, a she had cat. a long, fluffy tail, and it was the same. Like, her hair, she had hair. Like, she had ears, big green eyes. She had, like, brown, long brown hair, and her hair, her tail was fluffy, but it was the same color as her hair. You said she kind of looked like a Maine Coon, which I think are probably the most beautiful cat there is. She she looked almost like, and, and this is the thing about it. She looked almost like a lion in the face. Like her snout came down and it was almost dog-like, but it, like a lion is. Cause a lion's got that like long, longish snout. Yeah. And, and people have asked me if they thought maybe I thought she was a dog man, but I saw the dog man and this thing was very cat-like and the dog man was very dog-like. So in my, in my heart of hearts, I can't, I don't feel like that they're, they're, they're the same species or if they, I do feel like they were different because the other one that I saw was definitely a different color and it was definitely male. Um, yeah. So. Okay. The next one comes from Wendy. 
uh, could the wampus cat communicate with you in any way besides the giggling or the whistling i'm sure she could um i'm sure she could and at the time you know like i was i wouldn't say newly into being a psychic and stuff but like there's a lot of energy feed back and forth with things like that you know um that's why I wasn't scared of her. Like I wasn't scared. I was surprised by her. And I was also surprised by my friend, not telling me that she was there, but, um, she, she, you know, she made mocking sounds. Like if you giggled, she would giggle like, or like it just, or like, you know, if you made like a noise, she, she would make it back at you, but she never tried. She never tried to talk or anything like that. So, you know, I'm not sure okay. I would like to, I wish I could go back now, you know, and have the chance to see her again. I would, Definitely try some different communication things. Our, no next, one is from <laughs> Facebook, <laughs> Our next one is from a Facebook user, which is Robin Persed. They ask, how did Sasquatch hair feel? Coarse or smooth? It was surprisingly, well, it was definitely coarse, but it didn't feel gritty or dirty. It felt like a... Almost like if you like if you know what pink hair feels like, that's not dirty. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> like a, it was almost like a beard, but it was like well, you know, it was pretty coarse, but it wasn't. It it didn't feel dirty. Like my I didn't like my hands didn't stink afterwards because I definitely smelled my hands afterwards because you know I would. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm weird like that, but like uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's that weird. I always smell mine too. <laughs> right. Well, if I'd have known what I'd grabbed at the time, I might have like, you know. Grabbed one or two. Yeah. Get smacked out of the woods. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Next question from uh, Blue Crossroads. Did it look like one of the female actors in the musical Cats? Because that's what I'm picturing. Oh, I would have to. I would have to look at, I, I've never, okay, I'm, I'm like the new one, I'm, I guess you're saying, any of them, I haven't seen cats, I always wanted to see cats when I was little, and my parents thought oh, I was weird, like it was stupid, and it's I, fascinating. I never watched it, yeah, I'm gonna have to it's watch fascinating. it, fascinating, uh, but you're talking about, you were talking about her hair being so close to her body that it fit like it, a leotard, and in cats, that's pretty much the mark, yeah, yeah, because well, that's, that's, that's why mm -hmm. I thought that, and even one of my friends, my neighbor, well, my neighbors, who's like one of my best friends, you know, he's an older gentleman, him and his wife. I hang out with them all the time. There's that, there, it was their house that I was at when I um, did my first interview. <laughs> and okay. uh, they, uh, my, my neighbor was like, he, James, he was like, you sure it wasn't somebody playing a prank on you? I'm telling you, if this was somebody in my woods playing a prank on me, they spent thousands upon thousands of dollars on that movie makeup because it's like, like, you know, you barely see things on face off that are like well put together, like, like something like this. And this is yeah. definitely not like, I don't have friends who would spend thousands of dollars to play pranks on me. <laughs> me. Like, you know, and it, it's just, and that's crazy. a good way to get your ass shot too. Oh, you know? that's exactly <laughs> right. We're in Tennessee. Oh. We, we lock our guns here in ah. Tennessee and we shoot shit. That's why I talk about the coon or like they're the, like the, the coon hunters or the other uh, the other hunters that get onto the property. Yeah, they just they just don't know yet, you know. <laughs> they just don't know yet. That's the problem. So. And our last one is not a question but a comment, and I think it's awesome. Bristol says, "Sonia, you should react. You should reach out to S Sibylla Irwin." If you're familiar with her, she might be interested in sketching what you saw. Sibylla is a great artist, and she sketches Bigfoots that people have seen. And oh, that does cool. a really good job. Yeah. That yeah, that would be, really be actually, that would be really cool. Because, I mean, I would love to, I would love to draw what I saw, but I couldn't do it justice. And I would, I, again, I already color like a five-year-old, and I can only draw conclusions. That's what I tell everybody. I was like, <laughs> I'm not. So I would like, it's always been something that, that I would actually like to have done. It's, you know, something yeah, well, that usually costs money. Sibilla I'm a poor person. Is one, <laughs> Sibilla is the one that, that could do that for you. And I don't know if she charges or not, but she's pretty well known in the Bigfoot community. But we are here over the hour and it feels like we just started. So uh, this was awesome. I, I appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us. 
yeah thanks for listening i appreciate it i really do yeah i feel like this is gonna be one of our do what if you just give me two seconds blue crossroads wants me to pull up um one of the cats out of the musical so that is currently what i'm doing go ahead and pull that up i just have to set i just have to set everything up yeah, yeah, I remember the old Broadway one when, when they looked at it like a little bit. Like, can you see these? Let me pull up one here. There you go. See so, how yeah, they're like, like in the leotards, like that. Yeah. So yeah, like, that yeah, that was very. But her like the color of her hair and the color of her body were two different things. She was like, she was almost like a gray brown color on her skin. Her belly was white. Um, but yeah, it looked like she was wearing a leotard like that. Um, and again, she had two breasts. Yeah, so. And she was very feminine. But she had like a long fluffy tail. The face was definitely, you know, more had definitely more cat features and looked like a lion or like a I always want to say a dog, but it looked like almost like the Egyptian cat mixed with like with the dog. But that's the way that kind of the old Egyptian so, cats looked. Or the main coon, you know. Yeah, so it was almost like Anubis. Right. Sort of. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. yeah Cause she that. had really big eyes, like really big eyes. And again, her face, and I always describe her kind of like a dog, but it's like, it, like the more I looked at like the lions and stuff, they have that long, elongated face like that. So she looked like a man coon or like a lion in the face, but it was like, she was beautiful though. Like she was, she was beautiful. Well, needless to say, people are very interested in the Wampus Cat. This is the first time we've ever talked about it on this show, Paranormal Odyssey, and people can't get enough of it. They've been talking about it all night. So, yeah, yeah. sorry about last time. <laughs> no, it's fine. That was a different show. That one did not have the followers that this one has. So, you're going to reach a lot more people with this one. And uh, I appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us tonight. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening. All right, and I wouldn't mind having you back because I feel like you have some other stories that you haven't gotten to. So if you would like to come back, we will set that up. Yeah, y'all let me know it because I know you're busy and you've been booked solid. So I'm really happy for you guys. So (laughs) you let me know when you need me, (laughs) when you got an opening. Sounds good, ma'am. All right, you enjoy the rest of your evening and I'll be in touch. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Thank you. Bye. All right. How good was that, guys? It's always so good. The um, yeah. it, but the way she described her, I instantly saw the the musical cats in my head too. That's exactly what I have always seen. I talked to her. I remember it was the show that I used to do with a gentleman that I will not name because I don't care for him anymore. But mm-hmm. it was a couple of years mm-hmm. ago. Scarlet was a baby. Scarlet had not been alive very long i I think she was just starting to sit up and that's when Mm -hmm. i was doing that podcast and now next month scarlet will be three so it was a couple years ago that i talked to sonia and then when uh not long ago just made me think about her and i would see it reached out see if i could get a hold of her and she was she my interview that she did with me was the very first one she had ever done, and she's done some since then. Mm-hmm. So she was excited to come back, and I'm glad that she was. I'm glad that she came back too. Yeah. Because I was really interested. I was really intrigued. Yeah. Because I'm I mean, always, you know, it's my curiosity. I'm a very curious person. Everybody tonight, our audience was very respectful. I appreciate that, guys. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much for being respectful for to our guest, but you always are, so thank you. And, uh, yeah, like I want to have her back. I want to <laughs> have her back uh, to talk about some of her big stuff. And we didn't even get into her dog man shit. No. So and she's, she's got her. orbs on her property. Like, where it, there's got to be some kind of correlation. You know, she's got everything. Yeah, yeah. All right, you got anything else before we get out of here, ma'am? I don't. Just come back and see us on Saturday the 6th. We're going to have Patrick Meekin talking about his experiences. And he has several books out that he's written as well. Is that our next show, Saturday? Yes, the 6th. Yep. All right. Well, we will see y'all. 
Saturday. Appreciate everything that you guys do. Great, great audience participation tonight. Great questions. As always, guys, tell your friends, your family, help us to continue to grow and uh, include those members. A uh, bunch of people in here tonight that I de- haven't seen around. So if you guys are interested in joining our membership, get some members only perks, we would love to have you. But until we it's talk to you again, that's right, just a dollar ninety nine. But guys, until we talk to you all again, take care of yourselves, take care of each other.